All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, he arrived here. I believe he was taking a shower to look gracious and fresh and elegant. Mr. Jake Brutal Boswick, direct from England, now in Los Angeles, transferred from Miami, Miami, England, England, Los Angeles. We don't know where he lives now. I think he's a spy as a English, uh, as, as a British person. So he, he uh, high his nationality because he's from England. He moved to Miami and after back to England to fight and now is in Los Angeles. Jake Brutal Boswick, my brother, son, how are you? Congratulations right now. I can tell you face to face, congratulations. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, it was a blessing, mate. Absolutely showed up and done the business uh, at Wembley. That was awesome. Yeah, no. Uh, what what amazing. So, uh, let, so we we've been you've been here before in Cal's Boxing and Fitness. We we've been speaking about your experience uh, from MMA and your boxing career too. Your fights on and your record you are building in BKFC. How you became a star, but. Um, after what happened in the past, I think the past is the past. This fight you perform in England, one, in your country, your family was there because I saw your mom. I, I see your family there sitting, cheering for you. The environment from the British people in the stadium is just amazing. It's just energetic. Uh, I don't want to say it to Orlando or in Florida or the, in Tampa, the people know, I believe it's, it's good, but it's a different vibe. And of course, your fight was amazing. You became with uh, explosive. And uh, during the interview, to, I was speaking with you. To one reporter tried to eat all the show. Who was to be? It's like you know what? I wait. I I I like this guy. I know he liked me. And I wonder we want to have a conversation more chill out here. But oh, <laughs> yes, but um, your interview there, the speech you give to these uh, reporters. And I saw your partner also. She wasn't crying because your words was meaningful. Yep. It was very meaningful, was very uh, touchful because exactly <clears throat> it's that process from being trying and trying and trying and working hard and working hard. And people sometimes make a rude comment, sometimes, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that built you, that built Jake Brutal Boswick. That is correct, son. You know, um, everyone goes through their ups and their downs. Um, my thing is never physical, you know. My ability, I know I can fight, I know I'm tough. And it's always it's always there, you know. And, um, yeah, coming off of the losses that I came off and then to be victorious in that fight and look very good doing so, uh, yeah, it was a very emotional thing for me. You know, I feel like I just, like, unlocked something, you know. Um, it was really, it was super refreshing. It really, really was. Um, a beautiful evening, beautiful finish, beautiful fight by myself. I went in there with my head absolutely screwed on. Um, and yeah, like you said, the uh, the English crowd is no, so energetic. You know, it's super different. And it is different. You know, the, uh, the English and the Irish, very loud, very vocal, very, you know, amongst their fans and are very, very loud. The Americans, obviously, again, is it awesome. But it is a different kind of vibe, you know. Um, but yeah, what an absolute fun evening that was, mate. Yeah, and what a, um, I I have the opportunity to speak with David Feldman during the the fight or during the event, and also with Nelson. And instead, and and this is what makes uh, uh, a stars of this BKFC twenty seven in London. Yeah, like uh, all the fighters, they are well known on the very local boxing sport. Because the same night was uh, the Coldplay concert to was packed on the Wembley Stadium, yeah. And the Ovo Arena was packed, was full, was all the seats was covered because the people love the sport. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I say there was yeah, Coldplay was on. I think it was like eighty or ninety thousand people there or something. Like, uh, like it's crazy. And to think everything that obviously Bare Knuckle had to deal with, obviously the train strike, there was a bus strike. You know, so for travel for people, it was a big issue. Um, but yeah, it was still busy as hell, still super loud. And yeah, what an absolute night that was, right? 
Yeah, yeah no, and, and, and the production is spectacular. As I, as I said, uh, I saw your partner, Dr. Stephanie Cohen, because she's a doctor. I want to give her her title. She's a and doctor. She's a, <laughs> she's a yeah, yeah, so during your interview, when you was speaking about the, the good and the bad on their journey to your fight, she was crying. She was emotional, too. And I believe you, you transferred that to all of us because it was a very emotional uh, moment for you. So what is the meaning for you to uh, become from these two fights to, I don't want to say it's a loss because you're so professional. It's just a different sport. It's not like boxing. It's not like MMA. You know, it's a sport to go fast. It's a strong. And, yeah. it's, and at the end of the day, I want to say thing is not a loss. It's just a learning what you need to change yeah. in your dynamics. Yeah. So and, t- tell me, what are, you, what are you, okay. your thoughts? As much as I think Julian Lane is an absolute fucking prick. Can I swear on here, by the way? Of course, yeah. This is your space. That's yours. Ian Ian Lane is an absolute fucking prick. At the same time, that fight taught me so much. You know, so weirdly, I thank him for that, for the fucking beating that he gave me, you know, that night. You know, I tried to box him and he bare knuckle boxed me. You know, I was sitting on my front foot, sitting in the pocket, sitting right in the middle. And he was on the outside, just jabbing my face away. He opened my eyes to the clinch game, how how aggressive to be in the clinch. He hit me with some little shots that weren't nothing, but I had welts and stuff in my head. And I was like, damn, like super effective. Like I received all the damage because obviously you see me after that fight, obviously two fights ago, three fights ago, you know, my face took a bit of a pounding. But um, man, it really did open my eyes to how much more explosive it is. It's not a one-punch wonder kind of fight. It's not like you're, I don't know, on the street and you're going to bang someone one time and knock them out. No, like, bare-knuckle fighting, like, there's a referee. You have to be stopped in that motion. Um, so, yeah, you got to fight and fight your ass out, especially in bare-knuckle. And the defense game in bare-knuckle is the same thing. Like, you can't just put your hands up. Like my last opponent, for example, um, he put his hands up here. As soon as you're going to do that, like it's, it's a wrap. Like you can get around the side, you can get up the middle. Um, your defense is your movement, footwork and head movement. You see how elusive mm-hmm. I was on my feet, yep. side movement, constantly adjusting my feet, making him follow me, you know? Um, yeah, with bare knuckle, man, you can't just sit in the pocket and bang. It's a very different sport. And I say, like, like you mentioned, I'm over here in LA right now. And I'm boxing and I'm sparring. I'm boxing sparring with really good professional boxers. And um, it's so different to bare knuckle, mate. I'm doing three-minute rounds in the gym with 30-second breaks. So, obviously, the pressure, the, the, the output's different. And the boxing style is different, you know? Like, to bare knuckle box, like, you got to move so much. You really do. Like, you can't just stay there in the middle and just eat shots because... Just the jab can be enough. Like when I fought Ricci after lane, yeah. I got struck with a jab, you know, like a jab. It's like right on my chin, just a jab. Bing. It's, it really doesn't take a lot, you know. Um, and again, yeah, I'm adjusting to the sport. I really am. Bare knuckle boxing is its own thing. It is not boxing. Boxing is boxing. Bare knuckle boxing is very different. You can hold the head. You can dirty box. And obviously you deliver way more damage you know, and the rounds are so short, they're explosive. And yeah, it took me a few fights to adjust to that. Um, You know, when I fought Lane, that was my second bare knuckle Mm -hmm. fight. That was his seventh or eighth. Now I think of the knowledge that I've picked up in three, four fights, it's like crazy to think where I'll be in seven, eight fights time, you know? So when I fought Lane, he'd had a decent amount of experience in the bare knuckle scene, you know, so we kind of understood it. Not saying I didn't, but I was still new to the sport which I am. I'm still even that. But I really do understand it now. I totally get it. I totally get it. And then my last fight, I proved that and got a second round TKO finish. So, can't yeah, complain, so. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you are new on the sport, but you are not new on the combat sports in general because you have a long career in MMA. You have boxing career too. And as you mentioned, yeah, the boxing and bare knuckle boxing is not the same. Uh, and UFC, they've been having boxers 
coming out from retirement and is and jump inside to the the square circle and the they story the history is different yeah the story is different so they they they've been tasting like okay this is not the same mm -hmm. because with the glove you can get punched with the jab maybe i don't know like a in one round like a set like a 15 15 20 25 times in one round and you still move forward to the next round and yep. the bare knuckle you have only one jab <laughs> and, and you get and caught it really is that easy it really is that easy like you said like you're wearing mm -hmm. gloves 10 ounce boxing gloves you know it's like that is so different to like a bit of almost concrete hitting you in the face like it's so different you know um yeah, but man, what an amazing sport. And um, bare knuckle for sure suits my style more than anything. I can't box. I've got decent boxing for, you know, for my caliber of like, what I do in bare knuckle. Like, mm -hmm. I can't box. Um, but yeah, bare knuckle is for sure um, what I love, what I like. Yeah, t talking about boxing. So, you know, you move your camp. Are you, you're trained with the same uh, team. You have your same team. Of course, Steffi is your team always going to be with you so <laughs> yeah. are you are you adding somebody else are you working with somebody so i'm currently obviously in la um my girlfriend obviously steffi she's um she's fighting uh, october 22nd so she come here more for camp you know um and obviously i just mm -hmm. came with jump in and just come on the ride with her and see what opportunities are out here in la um so yeah, obviously I still have the same team back in Miami. I'm here until like October 25th or 26th or something. Then I'm going back to Miami. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just, for me, it's just opening my eyes to like the boxing lifestyle over here. The boxing community is crazy. It's no, the it best looks, thing. It really yeah, is. Cali yeah, California is big. And also because also the connection, you can go down to San Diego, Tijuana. And yep. you go, it's a different uh, story. Yeah? Tijuana, the, the underground boxing uh, yeah. is, is, uh, is something different. Talking about boxing, so uh, before you fight on, on London, and also I think was before also the, the versus uh, Richie, you was uh, surrounded by boxers because uh, also you was uh, being part of the camp of Chick Paul. Correct. Do, do you do you learn something in that camp? Like not necessarily the boxing part, but to view say, okay, this is what I need. This is okay. This guy has money because always he has all the access to the the gyms and everything. But yep. you that was helping you to pick ideas, things. What what what, what do you need in your camp to keep it, going ahead? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, obviously, when I was over there for, for the sparring um, or for the first fight against Woodley. Um, I was originally actually I sparred with Jake a few times for the um, for the uh, Ben Askren fight also, um, and then obviously yeah, I went over there for uh, the Woodley fight. Um, but when I was in Puerto Rico, man, just to see like you know he created his gym, he brings in all his sparring partners. Obviously, he has his coaches with him, but it was nice to see the lifestyle that he lives. Like he does, he lives like a professional athlete. You know, as much as people talk shit about him and whatever, like mm -hmm. he is the work he is hustling like man he is boxing right now at the end of the day like if you yeah. think about boxing, what kind of names are really popping off like jake paul's name gets mentioned all the time obviously because he's a showman people want to see him fight people want to see him lose people want to see him win it's just like he's just so he's just so in everyone you know yeah, like, no. like I, I totally respect it i'm not one to talk shit about anybody really ain't other than obviously Julian Lane, which I said, but <laughs> other than that, like, yeah, no, nah, they're good people, mate. And it's good to see, you know, what they're doing and how they're doing their things. And the same thing, but coming to LA, it's the same thing. It's like, it's nice to go around and see like the different styles that people have or they do or how they coach. You know, I've, you know, I've been in the fight game for 17 years, you know, I was doing MMA and whatever, but like I've traveled the world training with different places and picked up new things different ways how to wrap my hands, different ways how to throw certain shots, like so much stuff, you know. And uh, when I was over in Puerto Rico, yeah, with Jake Paul and that, I was living with uh, Jay Leon, obviously his other, his mm -hmm. other coach. Um, and um, we would talk boxing every night. He would give me some tips on stuff. We spoke about the lane fight, for example, and um, my foot placement and how I was sitting heavy on my front foot. And, 
you know, Jay Leon corrected me one evening in a three or four minute conversation. I was looking at him like, <laughs> wow. He adjusted my feet a little bit. And like, I was just like, wow. Just like the small little details, you know? And I added that into my game and I still have that in my game. And that was from Jay Leon from a three or four minute conversation one evening when we were just chilling, eating dinner, you know? Um, but yeah, no, it was awesome training over there with, with the team over there. That was super cool. And obviously, you know, it went really good. And obviously then Jake flew me, uh, flew me with them on, you know, on their private jet to, to the fight and stuff. So it was awesome to really be a part of it all. Um, yeah, no, it was super cool, mate. Super cool. But yeah, no, I, I pick up, I picked up knowledge here, there and everywhere from a bunch of people, mate. Even, even BJ Flores, for example, Jake Paul's obviously head coach. He, um, he came up and seen me before, uh, my last fight, uh, not my last fight, the fight prior before my Ricci fight. Yeah, Francesco Ricci. Yeah, BJ, BJ was in uh, was in Miami at the time, so he came up to the gym and you know he came up, gave me some little tips and stuff, and you know, yeah, no, really cool people, mate, really good people. No, yeah, and and, and of course, yeah, we can be seeing you or all, all the fans to and people to follow you as I call you myself a fan of you, man. Because I really like it. I like you. I like your style. I like your shows. I like I like who you are. You know, like a, you're those kind of athletes, as you mentioned. You are no the the verbal uh, offender speaking or trash talking. Yeah, uh, yep. because also in London, I saw that during the way in. You was the most friendly guy with with Chris Fishwell, <laughs> and uh, you you are cool guys. Like uh, this is business. No, let's go. I, yep. I like you, man. So go. The ring is a different story. After the ring is a different story. It happened the same with Francesco Ricci after the fight. He he come give you a hug and this man everything is fine and it's continue. Yeah. And okay. um, so what what is coming now? So when uh, we will see uh, Jake Brill Boswick back in the square circle, is any any information any news you want to share for the next uh, fights? Yeah, I'm. I still haven't signed a contract for anything um, or an opponent as of right now, but it's looking like December. Hopefully, Miami. As far as I'm aware, beginning of December time. So that's what it's looking like. Um, I was going to try and squeeze in a little boxing fight while I was out here because I've been training oh, boxing and I'm pretty much in camp with with the misses anyway. So it's like yeah. a bit I'm maybe, healthy. So maybe you can sign the contract for uh, BKFC Newcastle in November 26. You I can be that. back. <laughs> I I that. Baby Feldman, Jake Boss will. <laughs> It's training for this for November 26th, so he's ready, sir. No, I, I think it will be amazing, no, to see you back in your country again. Uh, you you yeah. like that? Let's say Newcastle is November. I'm sure they're going to do actual London um, again very soon, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So if and when they do an actual London card, I'll, I'm pretty adamant I'll be on that. But as of now, I say Miami is my hometown. Um, so if I can fight uh, Miami at the Hard Rock, All my all my Miami people can obviously come through there, um, and obviously anyone else that's going to watch it, you're going to stream it anyway and watch it on the app. So everyone can still see me fight. Um, but to be back in my hometown, Newcastle is definitely a little north of of London, a good few hours. Um, it's not necessarily my hometown area. Yeah. Uh, but London, but if, if and when they do, I'll definitely. I'm sure I'll be on that. Yeah, so um, I want to share this space to you. And I want, as I said, always chaos boxing and fitness is not just to, uh, I am the guy to interview fighters. The space is creating to exactly that. They give this uh, platform or space to the fighters or the athletes can uh, express themselves and, and, and have a little bit to something they can do. But I want to give you this uh, space for, um, I know you're working in a galaxy arena. Yep. It's part of one of your projects, and yep. people, uh, uh, some people mail me say, "Oh, are you interviewing Jake Boswick because he announced the Galaxy Arena?" What is this project? Okay, so Galaxy Arena basically is a virtual reality thing. So you can obviously everyone with the uh, obviously the VR situation, you go into the uh, metaverse, obviously the VR situation, um, and yeah, you can train, work out, you can team up with people. You can train with other fighters, other athletes that are a part of this. It's still new and still being all kind of like figured out as such. So obviously I'm still quite new with it myself. But um, yeah, there's still there's still more stuff to be you know explained about it. 
But the VR situation, yeah, everyone wants to sit, be at home and, you know, game or do whatever like that. But if you can go into the VR virtual reality situation in the metaverse and be able to like train alongside people like myself or other fighters that are involved. Um, yeah. And I think there is a way that you can make money also working out at home. I can't remember the full ins and outs on how that exactly works. I'm still learning again about it. But um, it is a super fun project. At the end of the day, let's be real, VR and stuff like that is for sure the future. You know, everyone's doing stuff from home. Mm -hmm. Everyone's working from home, doing stuff from home. So imagine being able to work out from home in a virtual reality world and be able to train alongside people like myself and other fighters, you know, is is super fun, mate. It's super cool. Um, but yeah, I'm still trying to learn a little bit more about it. But it's nice that they want to get me involved and uh, get me a uh, part of the project. Well, congratulations, and and and, and we wish you to. It's no one. It's uh, many many other projects come. I know you have also your sponsors. Uh, you want to give a shout out to your sponsors. Uh, obviously, yeah, Galaxy Arena, um, millions. Obviously, millions are always backing me, help me. Obviously, um, you know, I do my uh, my thingy. What they called. Um, uh, my watch parties, obviously, with millions. So we stream the fight. I watch fights and, you know, you can see my reactions watching the fights and that. So, yeah, thank you to millions. Um, hybrid performance. Um, obviously, that's my girlfriend's company. Um, so, yeah, no, obviously, that's that's super awesome. Um, what else is going on? Other people that I've got in the works. Yeah, there's not really other people in the works right now, mate. <laughs> the work sponsors and stuff, but, you know... Um, yeah, just, you know, my team, my people, anyone that's supporting me, you know, I'm still warming into the uh, bare knuckle scene and, yeah, you're going to see still so much more from me. Yeah. So much more. So, just, um, I want to ask you something for the last. I, I know you, you need to go back to training, my friend. So, I know, I know, I know you need to keep moving. But um, yeah. also something to take my uh, attention during the, uh, that interview on after the post-fight. Yeah. You you was speaking about to all the haters, yeah, all the people hate. And um, I've been speaking also with uh, Joe Hitman, with uh, Tyler Rudjohn, with uh, uh, Taylor the Killaby. At the end of the day, all of you, you are uh, an athlete, athletes, you are professionals, you are uh, bare knuckle boxers, and of course, other and other sports is other athletes. But this became a tendency to people to they don't know how much work and effort you put on in these uh, events to also it's not just a competition event for you. It's a show to you guys provide to us as a fans and audience, uh, reporters, media, TV, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And every day became more easy to people just sit behind the computer or the phone and can offend athletes. And it's, I think, something to I've been trying to talk with people and, uh, and share this information because you are the ones to need to tell the people, hey, you know, stop to do this because you don't know what happens. Sometimes it's some athletes who have more bigger issues and people, they don't understand how much affect that. Yeah, And, and you was emotional because you said, fuck you, all these haters. <laughs> And uh, the people is with me is with me. People hate me, hate me. But yeah, no. Um, so what do you think about this But in, in your person as an athlete? Um, honestly, like at the end of the day, everyone has, like, for example, I train every day, yes. I still have my outside of gym life, obviously. You know, I'm in the gym, let's say, three, four hours of the day. Well, the other 20 hours, I'm just doing me, you know. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing. Same as anybody. Everyone's got their life. People have their problems. People have their issues, money issues. People are dying in their family or like anything. Everyone's got something going on. Um, so, for example, when you don't show up to a fight and your head's not in the game because of outside gym stuff going on, people don't necessarily respect that or they won't understand it because they're not doing what we're doing. Like the end of the day, for me to wake up, I was up at 5.30 this morning to go train, you know? How many other people are waking up at 5.30 to go to the gym to work out? There's not many. Well, there is, but there isn't, you know what I'm saying? Um, and for mm -hmm. your average, I don't know, civilian, however you want to say it, regular person to be sitting at home on a keyboard and be able to be an absolute keyboard warrior and be like, 
you're a fucking prick, you're a piece of shit, uh, you're rubbish, why'd you fight, blah, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> like fuck you, get on with your life, let me get on with mine. If you haven't got anything like good to say, like why does anything have to be negative? Like, why do I need to read comments? And still to this day, I still read comments about previous fights, the lane fight, for example. Man, I still see bullshit about that fight. And it, it pisses me off because it's like, fuck you, man. You don't, you don't understand what I've been going through, what I have had to weather to even be where I'm at. You don't know. Like, I'm from South London. Bruv, man, my life has gone mad directions, mate. From South East London, working the doors for 70 quid a night, fighting every weekend because there's fucking drunk idiots to, you know, I'm in LA trying to pursue a career, you know, like that take, it is, it's a lot of headache. It is stress in its own manner. Um, but people don't appreciate the discomfort that we have to go through to be to where we're at. You know, like at the end of the day, you're all, you're never going to get away from people talking shit. At the end of the day is, it's one of them things you, you, you're never going to get away from it. Everyone will always have something to say, even if I'm doing good. For example, even if Jake, Jake is doing good and beat somebody, for example, he knocked out Tyrone Woodley. Oh, that was fake. That was staged. Nah, you're talking shit. Ah. It's like, bro, it, Jake just knocked out an ex-UFC champion. Clean as day. Mm -hmm. How are you shit? Shut the fuck up. He just knocked out a legit name. Like, why? But yeah. you're going to see it. Everyone, there's always haters. Always haters, like brother. Anyone that's doing well, hats off to you. You know, like I'll pat you on the back. People go, oh, I just got a new sponsor. I'm paying me this. I just got. I'm like, oh man, that's amazing. The sponsors that I would love, that I don't have, that I need, that I could be a prick about and be like, oh fuck you, and like I could be tight about it. But no, I'll pat you on the back. Respect, mate. That's 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 what I want. Like I, I need to go that direction. You know, like I'm all about supporting. I'm not one to talk shit. But you're all, you're never gonna get away from it. Everyone's always got something bad to say. Um, but it's one of them things you've got to really, like, not pay attention to it as much as you can. You're going to see the comments. Mm -hmm. my, my following on Instagram isn't crazy. I've got, like, 65,000 on there. So like, You will see the comments. You will see the comments out there, conversation here, because it's going to be on YouTube. So it's gonna, you're going to see the... <laughs> all there you there. Go. Yeah, they're going to speak. Yeah, there yeah. you go. If you think about it like that, it's, you know, I, I don't have that much crazy shit going on. But even someone like my girlfriend, Steffi, she's got over a million on her Instagram. The comments, the hatred, what she looks like, bruv, like, it is disgusting. And there's just like, there's no need for it, you know? But it's just the world that we live in and people are fucking haters at the end of the day. They're absolute haters. Just respect what we're doing. Appreciate that, you know, the journey isn't easy for everyone. People struggle, people struggle with money, whatever. You know, yep, like everyone's exactly. got, like everyone's got their shit going on. I've got my issues going on. I don't share it on Instagram. I don't talk about it. I'll I'll share what I want to share, but I ain't gonna be on there giving my negative shit. You never see anything. Very, very, very rarely you see anything negative from me. Very rare. It, 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 it's very true because uh, one of the things take my attention is like you are the most positive people. To lately, you don't say good morning to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> How many people on me about it? That was that was for a long time too. I I, I really put me in a good mood, so like they, good morning, and it's like and you you have you have personality, you have a good vibe, you you're always yeah. smiling. It looks like you are fine all the time, and and I believe because that good vibe in London plus the good vibe, plus a good partner in your life, plus your family, plus in your country, you step inside the square circle and you perform. Uh, one amazing spectacle because I saw the fight I was three lines in in my pers pers very personal perception you looks very different Jake Boswick in difference to the fight with Francesco Ricci yep. in this last fight you was more I don't know how to say it, like you have a lot of more mobility you was oh. bouncing you were more comfortable. You were standing, as you mentioned, was very a little more wider, more a long step, and um, and uh, you you was more mobile around the, the square circle. You was more uh, light with your hand. I saw your hands moving more, uh, less muscular, more 
let go the sweets. Yep. I wasn't getting all tense. I wasn't like getting, trying to throw my hands to try and knock him out. I was just actually throwing my hands. I was committing to my shit and not waiting. And that's my issue. It's always that pause and that wait that, is it now the time? Like, no, just fucking buy it down and throw your fucking hands, mate. You know? And, and, that, and that's all it is. Like, if you watch my bare knuckle fights from Tyler Vogel, um, Julian Lane, Delane, Francesco Ricci, like, whoop, like, bro, I so understand how bare knuckle needs to be played out. It's, you know, it's not boxing, it's not MMA. Bare knuckle boxing is its own thing. Like, we went over this earlier. Mm -hmm. It is being the two minute rounds, you hold the head. You can do so much damage with your knuckles, mate. But if you don't throw punches, you're not going to deliver any damage. When I fought Lane, I didn't really throw anything. People are like, oh, that fight was, you know, whatever. Like, you still done good. I'm like, no, I didn't do nothing. Like, I was and, thinking and about... To... Brother, I was sitting there thinking about feeding my cats. For and to be honest, to be honest, we respect to Julian because he's saw their amazing, uh, crazy guy in the bare knuckle. Now it's in Russia <laughs> fighting. But... Uh, he hit you during the way in, I remember. I was there, so he gave you know, the, the head bump. And that can cause you, uh, fortunately, it doesn't happen anything worse, but you can be out to that fight or you can have a really docile uh, area to where he can call you fast. At the end of the day, you show you show the, next, the, the fight and, yeah, it was by decision. Yep, 100%. And like I say, with that fight, I had to weather massive storm, brother a big storm. Like, I wasn't in the room. I could have easily just stayed down when he dropped me. He dropped me twice. And obviously then he opened my face up. I had a mm -hmm. bunch of cut. Um, and I knew that I wasn't in the room, you know, but I wasn't going to quit, you know, like I wasn't. I was going to stand there and just weather the fucking storm. And I smiled for it, mate. He dropped me and I smiled. He dropped me again and I smiled. I had mm -hmm. blood out of my face. I was not in the room, brother, but I was fucking smiling, you know? Like, that was the most uncomfortable time that I had put my head in and just been so uncomfortable and being, like, so overwhelmed with just everything and then getting dropped to my ass twice. Yeah, like I said, the multiple cuts. And like, I knew I was, was losing because I wasn't throwing my hands. I wasn't doing anything. I was so flat on my feet. Like, I just was not there. Prior going into that fight, I had a changing coach. Uh, well, I didn't even have a coach. <laughs> I, I, I uh, dropped mm -hmm. off my coach. I changed my management. I had a bunch of shit that was like gun against me, against me. Again, like no excuses for anything. I didn't show up, period. I could have still showed up and had a fight, but I didn't. My preparation was okay. I had a big cut. I walked into that fight at like 204. I walked into my last fight at 190. Wow. And I thought that weight class, you know? Yeah, no, no, you was ripped. So what what cap, so if you can share with us, because we as an audience, we watch the fight. Yeah. But what we believe the fighter is there. What is in your mind? The last two minutes exchanging hits, but also you was the one hitting more because you was dropping combinations of three, four punches, five punches, six punches. But what was your last minutes before the knockout? When you see him knockout, Chris, what comes in your mind? Like I, when you see what you've been working, your performance give fruits. When well, in the, I think it was in the was it in the first round? I, yeah. I rocked, I rocked him. I threw a roll. I hit him with a hook, and I see him put his hands up. I went double jab down the center. I hit him with a big right hand, and I rocked him on the on the ropes, and he was calling me on, and I was like. No, no, no. I knew <laughs> if I stuck with what I was doing, I was going to win. I didn't let anything phase me. Even if you watch that fight back after the first round, I was like, just finding my... I felt so comfortable, mate. And you see me walk back to the corner, smiling, and then if you hear, mm -hmm. if you actually watch, I go, warming up, warming up. Like, I was having fun. I was. It was the first time in a long, long time I was actually having fun doing what I was doing, you know? And like, I wanted to be there. Um, not that I never wanted to be there before with other fights, but my mental state going into this, I was like, fuck that. I was like, 
bro, I'm made for this, you know? And it was just like little things I was telling myself. I knew my preparation was good. I knew my game plan. This was the first time I actually went in there with a game plan and did not let anything break that. Like, I didn't let anything break it. Stick to my lateral movement, in and out, lateral, hit him, move out, make him chase me, make him chase me, which I fucking did. And I stuck to it and it worked. It was like, ah, okay, that's what happens when you actually have a game plan and you capitalize on it and stick to it and, you know, really roll with it. Even with Ricci, I had a game plan, but at the same time, I had lack in sparring, especially against someone who was six foot four. I, I broke my ribs like a mm -hmm. month out. So sparring, I don't know if you know, wow. but I had sparring for the Ricci fight and I'm five eight and he's six four. So that timing, to get into someone that long, you know, it's a bit of a chore. He's fucking yeah. far away from me. Um, so my footwork was very in and out with, with Ricci because he's super tall. Um, and the game plan worked, but I don't feel I had enough... Um, More lateral like, movement. I had no lateral movement really with yeah. that. Uh, and in and out, in and out, which was fine. Um, and it still could have worked. But again, with Ricci... In and out is okay, but still a little bit more lateral, a little bit more clinch, you know. I know exactly what I've got to do with the taller guys now, especially in bare knuckle. I'm gonna pull your head down to my fucking height and I'm gonna I'm gonna rip you a new one, mate. <laughs> yeah. When so um, where where do you <laughs> think now you are you're ranked now? So where where do you see yourself coming to do you think one more fight and you can uh achieve the, the title championship or uh or, or maybe there's the next one? At the end of the day, um, the next fight will be just a fight. I'm not too sure who. Like I said, we've been uh, negotiating. We're not negotiating. I've had a couple of names thrown at me, so we're kind of trying to see what we want. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like, yeah, one or two fights, and for sure I can take the belt. Like, 100%. Like, at the end of the day, well. with Ben, mate, wins, losses, like, you can turn things around very different. I think in bare knuckle. Um, so where I got the two losses on my record or not, there's still two good fights. There's still experience for me. And it was, again, I was so yeah. new to football, you know? Um, but yeah, one or two fights, mate, for sure I'll be fighting for the belt. I think I've got a couple more fights under my contract anyway for maybe rene renegotiating or whatever's going to be next. I was trying to get Mike Perry for the next fight, honestly. You know, mm -hmm. I beat Mike Perry today. All day, mate. I know he's unbeaten. He's beaten, obviously, Lane. He beat, obviously, uh, MVP. Um, but I wanted that fight. Stylistically, everything. I just think it suits bare knuckle. Um, well, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't, you know, whatever. Uh, you, 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 ne you never say it don't happen because everything is possible. And, and you know everything is possible because you make possible this last fight in London. You was in front of your hometown, so... And life, nothing is possible, champ. So, Jake Brutal Boswick here in Chaos Boxing and Fitness. And uh, we wish you the best, mate. And thank you. I appreciated your time. You are always very kind. Appreciate you. Boss, uh, we want to wish uh, good luck to Steffi and her next fight. Is, is it boxing, MMA, or uh, uh, boxing, yeah? Uh, over 22nd, it'd be here in Miami. I'll be posting about it once I have the full ins and outs. Uh, but it's a, a, a like a local uh, local show around here. So yeah, yeah and, and, let, and let's to give a space here to she can has her own uh, episode to she can speak with who is going to fight, what he's doing, and who is behind yeah. her as a coach too. And it's Jake Brutal Boswick. I wish you the the best for both of you. Uh, you are very dedicated, professional people in the combat sports, and uh, yeah. we hope to see you very very soon and and BKFC and any any car to before to the end of the year and yep. keep us posted with any projects plans to come and uh and please keep saying good morning in the mornings man you are the oh, all, the best one <laughs> I got you, I got you, 100 ladies and gentlemen from england now in los angeles but he's moving back to miami jake brutal boswick a professional bird knuckle fighter from the organization bkfc and winner on the last fight in BKFC 27 in London. Thank you so much, my brother. I wish you the best. Stay healthy, stay good, and let's talk soon. 100%, bro. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me, man. Top man. Thank you. Thank you.
Chao. Bueno.